Hi, welcome to the Need for Excel YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to learn how to connect to an SQL Server database and get data by using SQL queries and stored procedures. I'll be having a series of 3 to 4 videos that will cover this topic of database connectivity using Excel and Excel VBA in depth. This first video in the series isn't going to use any sort of VBA coding. We will just be using built-in options that Excel provides to get data from an SQL table to Excel. This method is really straightforward, very quick and allows us a bunch of useful settings. Let's click on the data tab and observe the options available to us. The first group is the one we are interested in. You can get data from Microsoft Access, websites, text files etc. right from here. They are pretty straightforward wizards so feel free to try them out yourself. Click on the drop down that says from other sources and you'll be presented with a lot of crazy options to get your data from. If your data source isn't listed here, you can check out the data connections wizard and find some more providers right here. We are looking to get data from an SQL server. So click on from SQL server. You can simply copy your server name from the SQL server itself. Based on your authentication mode, you will have to enter your logon credentials. I'll have to mention the username and password here. Click on the next button and you should be able to see the database and its tables if your logon credentials are right. You might have to select a different database if required. I'm fine with this one, but I'll select a table called sales details and then click the next button. Here you will have options to choose existing connection files, to save passwords, etc. If you already have a connection file with the same name, it will give you a pop-up to replace it. Let's click yes for now. It will now give you various options for getting your data to the workbook. I'm going to get it as an Excel table starting from cell A1. You can also import data straight into a pivot table or a pivot chart if you wish to. If your Excel version supports the data model, you'll have this option. But I'm going to leave it unchecked for now. If you click OK, your data will be imported right away. But it's worthwhile setting up some important properties beforehand. So let's click on the properties button. Here you can select the refresh interval and other refresh options. Mostly all of them are pretty straightforward and easy to understand. Let us check out the definition tab and see what we have there. You will be able to see the connection string that is making the connection between Excel and the SQL server which Excel automatically generates for you. We are going to use this trick in later videos as well. I am interested in the field that says command type. If it's a whole table you want to import, the command type will be table and the command text will show you the database name and the table name as it's showing right now. This is the best thing about this wizard. Most of the stuff like the connection string, the command text etc are generated by Excel itself. If you wish to have an SQL query, all you have to do is change the command type to SQL and put the query right here and click on OK. Let's go to the SQL server for a minute and see what our query returns. It returns all the sales information from the sales details table. Copy the query using Ctrl C and put it on the command text box and click OK. I want the data starting from cell A1 so let's leave it as is and click OK again. Just in case it asks you for the password again, you might have to retype it in. There's your data right there. You can simply right click and select refresh to get the latest data from the database anytime you want. If you wish to alter any of the previously set properties, you can simply right click anywhere on the table, go to table and modify the properties. There are a bunch of helpful properties here and I urge you to check them all out. My favorite one is auto refresh. All you have to do is set the refresh interval 
and it will auto refresh after the set period of time. Let's go ahead a step now and see how we can call an SQL store procedure using the same method. First of all, I'll show you how the SQL command for calling a stored procedure looks like. It starts with the word exec or execute, then has the database and the stored procedure name, followed by the parameters inside single quotes required by the stored procedure. When executed, it returns a product-wise aggregated list of units sold. Executing a stored procedure is exactly similar to executing a regular SQL statement like we did earlier. Let's copy the command for the stored procedure. Go to our table. Right click on go to external data properties. Click on the connection properties button. And under the definition tab on the command text box, paste the command. That is all you need to change. All the previous steps remain exactly the same. Click on the OK button and you should have your data returned by the stored procedure. If you're using any other database like MySQL or Access, the steps we learn will almost be the same. In the next video, we'll see how to get data from SQL Server using ADO. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video if you think it was useful. See you next time.